Welcome to episode... The counter offer, episode 25. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. I just counted. 25. I four. thought you were going to say 24. Think about that. That's pretty... a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's good English right there. <laughs> That's pretty a lot. Eric, right, can we stand right next to each other? There we go. Now we're both screen? in focus. Number 25, he says two articles that I don't know, and I say two articles he doesn't know. Today we're going to be talking about Queens is surpassing Brooklyn as the most competitive market among high rents in New York City. Last week really? we talked about Manhattan. Now we're talking about Queens. It's more competitive than Brooklyn, which is crazy. Rents year over year are up 12% in Queens. Listen to this. Average listings receive 133% more inquiries this year than last year. Wow. That's a lot of demand. And that's what drove it up 12% year over year. Medium rent has risen 11% over the, the year over year. May was even higher than April. These must be April. Street Easy statistics. Yeah, exactly. So which you got the article from Street Easy. I got the article from Street Easy. Yeah, I are, love Street Easy. They write good articles. They were, this was because an amazing got, article. they got the data. They got, the, they got all of the data. Yeah. They have yeah. all of New York City's Anybody data. Anybody looking for a rental in Queens is going on Street Easy. Yep. Uh, Especially no fee. Yeah, yeah. Well, does that include Long Island City? I would assume so, since Long Island City is in Queens, Mr. Bottomley. I don't know. I don't go out that way very often. Except what? if you saw my nice listing in Long Island City. <laughs> I did. Unit for sale, not yeah. for rent. Yeah. But yeah, no, we have a lot of buildings out there in Queens, and it is very, very busy. Great price points. So that's where you would imagine that the prices are. I actually sold in that up. building. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I represented the buyer. Very Great. nice condominium. Great investment. Yeah. You, you know, it's uh, easy to get to as well, especially for this office. Seven train? Absolutely. Yeah. So you're moving from Upper East Side to Long Island City now? No, I'm moving to One Manhattan Square. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Well, we have Just an apartment for $3 million dollars there. Uh, so the last thing I'll say, and as noted by the author of the article, with elevated asking rents, encouraging more homeowners to consider renting out their homes than selling. What do you think is going to happen is lower inventory for sales, higher rents. I just got off the phone with two people. Their jobs are forcing them back into the city. One was in San Diego, the other one was in Miami. So they're moving back to the city. So the city has no shortage of people returning to it or living here. Yeah, and or having it as a Pieta Terra second home. It will be a moment where sales just start taking off. Yeah. There, it will be one week, probably after July fourth. There's no seasonality anymore post COVID. There's no seasonality. You know what I last thought on Queens and Long Island City is that a lot of people went to Greenpoint. Greenpoint, blew, oh yeah, blew up. It was very hot. Yep, everybody loved it, and. You get those low monthlies, which you also get in Long Island City, and I've been seeing like Greenpoint is more inconvenient than Long Island City. You actually have by to, far by far you have to transfer it's twice. Like, yeah. So I think and it's the ghost train that yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. So I would G. absolutely say that Long Island City is one of those markets that's going to take off yeah. because you want to come into Midtown to go to the office. That's very accessible. Yeah. Uh, don't know which one. Uh, let's start with this one. New York legislature agrees to replace the J-51 tax abatement. Last minute deal revives affordable housing rehabilitation program. I like it. Good. Great. What was the appointment last week at the new development? Taking There's away the tax abatements. Where are the developers going to go? Not New York City. Yeah. So they're going to go where they're Everything incentivized. Everything is expensive. The land is expensive, like they were mentioning. Yep. Uh, you know, labor in the future, materials. New developments are going to, you know, there aren't going to be as many. Yeah. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So programs like this have to be in place so that they can incentivize people to develop. Uh, you know, I was surprised. Um, I thought they would bring back the regular 15 or 25 year tax abatement, not J51, but that's interesting. In a last minute maneuvering to seal the deal on a state budget at the end of April, Hockle, right? Hochul? It's Hockle. Oh, the governor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who she is. Uh, was forced to abandon her plans to build more than 800,000 new homes in the Empire State. So, 800,000 new homes? Yeah. 
Yeah, so they treat housing kind of like they're bartering over it, you know, and these are people's livelihoods. Yeah. So it's really good that they did that up to, so the new program will, will run for 20 years and will require eligible buildings to be 50% affordable, receive substantial wow. government assistance, or be a part of the city's Mitchell Lama projects. Up to 70% of renovation work would apply to the break, which would require landlords to keep the units rent stabilized for a minimum of 15 years. According to assuming that the New York City Council enacts the program, the tax break will apply to renovations completed between June 29th to June uh, to 2022 to June 30th, 2026. <laughs> since we're talking, please read more of the article. <laughs> since we are talking about, well, I know, you know these things, you got to get it straight. Fifty uh, percent is going to be since they're talking fair, about renovations or, um, on J fifty one. They yeah. really should see if this applies to the office buildings. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the future. Seeing some of these midtown offices. Talking about affordable housing, they started their second phase of the. Affordable housing projects in Harlem. Breaking ground. What does everyone talk about in all of the comments by people who are not in real estate? Where is the affordable housing? Where is the housing that makes sense for people that have, say, fifty to $100,000 as their salary? Well, it's too expensive to build. And here's a perfect example. Harlem-based developer is coming in. Broke ground recently on the second phase, $350 million in central Harlem, 112 West, 124th Street. We were just there. As part of a mixed income multifamily development. So they have 168 units hmm. being built at $350 million. Has anyone run the math on that? I did. That's over $2 <laughs> million a unit to build. Wow. $2 million. That's not affordable. Okay. That's high end. That's affordable would be 350 units at a million dollars to build. It just doesn't make sense financially. So this developer who's ever getting it, uh, they're making a lot of money on it. And to be honest, that's not how you build affordable housing. You want to maximize the amount of housing that you can get. So it's affordable, not $2 million per unit to build in central Harlem. I don't know how that worth, that math works out. Because the government's going to subsidize them. Yeah, I think it's all <laughs> government. I think it's all government that gave them the money. But that's what I'm saying. To build 168 units for $2 million each is like a high-end luxury building in Tribeca. That's not a central Harlem. I don't know. just doesn't make sense. I agree with affordable housing. I do not agree with how they're going about it. That's yeah. that's the, the one item about it. But we do need more affordable housing. There's a lot of land in Harlem, so it'll be interesting. Hmm. I'm going to have to read that article, Charles. Yeah. Sounds... It's in Cranes. Well, oh, really? Oh, How'd you get on the cranes? cranes? You know, I always uh, go over my subscription limit. So, you know, they're like enough free articles. You so. got to go over to private browser. Yeah, I did that, but it doesn't work. It didn't work for Ooh. me. Their yeah. technology you know is what? getting better. Because I found a funny article. It was about people wearing ties more often. <laughs> <laughs> you actually say the opposite. Is that true? Uh, you'll have to read the article. I will have to read the article. I was thinking about That some... made it into Cranes? Yeah. Oh, oh you, you should see. <laughs> Must Cranes, have been a slow news Cranes has a lot of uh, articles they send They like to do time. that. So, anyways. Uh, Moving on. Yes. This is the, like, flashy grabber, you should probably use this as your YouTube title type of article, uh, reminiscent of back in 2019. Dun, dun, dun. The city council bill would cap broker fees and shift the cost to the landlord. So if you don't remember, last yeah. in 2019, they did that. It surprised everybody. There was a huge backlash, blah, 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 blah. They are reintroducing that bill on Thursday. So... Uh, Rebney, the useless mafia of real estate in New York, <laughs> sent out. Oh, the, God, that's on camera. <laughs> the, they sent out roughly an email talking about it, and it's going Did to they be really? similar language. I've unsubscribed I, from all of well, them. Yeah, exactly. I didn't get the email. Anyways, <laughs> I didn't uh, get the email. Yeah, they you sent know to what? five brokers. They probably didn't even send out the email. Yeah. That is how useless they are. 
And uh, I'm sure, well, who knows? I go back and forth on this, uh, but the best is when you go and I, I had to, I saw this article and then I was like, I'm gonna sign on Instagram, I'm gonna go on the real deal, and then I'm gonna read the comments, which are just like poison. Yeah, uh, it is. Yeah, it was Atomic bomb. So yeah. the two sides of it, we've talked about this many times before, you just uh, push the costs onto the landlord. A lot of people aren't used to paying brokerage fees in Manhattan collecting from the tenant. The landlord hires us, to broker the apartment. They're the ones who should be covering the brokerage fees. Uh, typically, especially in a market like this, you collect from the tenant. Uh, that, I don't think this is done anywhere else, by the way. Uh, it is in Massachusetts, apparently. Well, so, which that is another hot market with uh, low inventory. Yeah. So because of the unrelenting demand, that's kind of the market, is that you're able to do that. Because you think back into COVID, we were always all charging no fee. And it was really difficult actually to find tenants, but they were, you know, throwing everything you could in terms of in terms of incentives. That only lasted, you know, two years. It reminds me of when this happened in 2019 that we just added it to the rent. Yeah. So you take a month, you you disperse it over the rent. The rent goes up a little bit, which then got me thinking about inflation. You well, know? I would like to say that I only put up no fee apartments. Yeah. Well, you should stick as a rental agent for the rest of your life. It will work out very well for you. Uh, it rents quicker. It'll be interesting if they pass it. I think out of all the things in real estate to be talking about, to be talking about the broker fees is very interesting. I wonder who's pushing it because it's not like it's a there's a... Because yeah, but won't. it's not like a tenant organization Unless there is, I don't know who's who's paying for the tenant organizations. The because they want to get your vote. They're like, oh, who's experienced a bad thing? It's it's like uh, going after the airlines for delays and uh, baggage fees. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh yeah, all these people will see what a fighter I am for the annoying. Well, Situation we covered a lot did. of articles today. I know you want to cut this short. I don't understand. I mean, I can see this <laughs> like, uh, you know. Well, I think the people want to be entertained, and they got their articles. They want to be uh, excited about... Well, you can get entertained one more time next week. We'll be back, episode 26, starting a whole new... Two articles, quarter. I know. Yeah, we should do an entire season. We do seasons. <laughs> season one has come to a conclusion. Next week, we're going to have a totally different background. Anyway, we'll be back next Wednesday. News... Enjoy your week. If you have any questions, leave in the comments below. We'll talk to you then.